Inferno, Canto 28, The Eighth Circle, Fraud, The Ninth Trench, Sowers of Discord. Whoever could, even with unfettered words, tell fully of the blood and of the wounds which now I saw, though oft he told the tale, all tongues would certainly fall short of it by reason of our speech and of our mind, whose means are small for taking in so much. If all the people should again assemble, who on Apulia's fortune-ravaged soil suffered of old from all the loss of blood shed by the Trojans, and in that long war, which with its spoil of rings made such high heaps, as Livy writes, who maketh no mistakes, with those who felt the painful force of blows received in waging war with Robert Guiscard, and those whose bones are still heaped up together at Ceperano, where a faithless liar was each Apulian, and near Talia Cozzo, where old Alardo won, though all unarmed. And if of these one showed a limb pierced through, and one a limb lopped off, it would all be nothing, compared with this ninth trench's foul display. No cask indeed by loss of middle board or stave is opened as was one I saw, split from the chin to where one breaketh wind, while down between his legs his entrails hung, his pluck appeared, and that disgusting sack which maketh excrement of what is swallowed. While I on seeing him was all intent, he looked at me, and opening with his hands his breast, he said, See now how I am cloven. Behold how torn apart Mahomet is. Ali, in tears, moves on ahead of me, cloven in his face from forelock down to chin, and all the others whom thou seest here, disseminators where, when still alive, of strife and schism, and hence are cloven thus. There is a devil here behind, who thus fiercely adorns, and to the sword's edge puts each member of this company anew, when we have gone around the woeful road because ere one return in front of him, the wounds thus made have all been closed again. But who art thou that musest on the crag, perhaps to put off going to the torture, adjudged thine accusation of thyself? Death hath not reached him yet, replied my teacher, nor to a torment is he led by guilt, but that complete experience may be given him, I, who am dead, must needs conduct him here from circle unto circle down through hell, and this is true, as that I speak to thee. On hearing him, more were there than a hundred who stopped there in the ditch to look at me, and who through their surprise forgot their pain. To Fradolcino, do thou therefore say, Thou that perhaps wilt shortly see the sun, if soon he would not hither follow me, to arm him so with food, lest stress of snow should give the Novarese a victory, which else would not be easily obtained. When one foot he had raised to go away, Mohammed said these words to me, which done upon the ground he stretched it to depart. Another then, who had his neck pierced through, his nose cut off as far as neath his brows, and who had one ear only, having stopped to gaze in wonder with the others there, opened before the rest his throat, whose neck vermilion was on every side, and said, O thou that by thy guilt are not condemned, and whom up in the Latin land I've seen, unless to great resemblance play me false, call Pierre de Medicina to thy mind, if e'er thou see again the lovely plain, which from Vercelli slopes to Marcabo, and makes it known to Fano's two best men, to Messer Guido and Angiolello too, that they, unless foreseeing be in vain, down here will from their vessel be cast forth, and drowned in sacks near La Catolica, through a disloyal tyrant's treachery. Between the isles Maholica and Cyprus, Neptune ne'er saw so great a crime committed, by pirates, nay, nor by the Argolic folk, that traitor who sees only with one eye, and holds the town, from seeing which, one now, is with me here, who fain would fasting be, will to a conference have them come with him. He'll then so act, that against Fokara's wind, they'll stand in need of neither vow nor prayer. And I to him, Point out and show to me, if news of thee thou'dst have me bear above, which is the one who had the bitter sight. 
thereat he laid his hand upon the jaw of one of his companions oped his mouth and cried this is the one for he speaks not when exiled he removed all doubt in caesar by saying that a man when once prepared ne'er brook delay but to his detriment oh how dismayed that curio seemed to me who from his throat now had his tongue cut out yet once had been so daring in his speech then one from whom both hands had been lopped off raising his maimed arms through the gloomy air so that his blood befouled his face cried out mosca will thou remember too who said alas what's done is done a speech which proved the seed of evil for the tuscan race and death i thereto added to thy tribe then he as woe on woe he heaped went off as one would whom his grief had made insane but i remained to look upon the throng and such a thing i saw as i should be afraid to tell of without further proof if it were not that conscience reassures me the good companion which beneath the breastplate of conscious purity emboldens man i really saw and still i seem to see it a trunk without a head which moved along as moved the others of the mournful herd and by the hair it held the severed head which hanging like a lantern from its hand was saying as it gazed at us oh me with his own self he made himself a lamp and two in one they were and one in two how this can be he knows who so ordains when at the bridge's very foot he was he raised his arm above him head and all that he might thus bring nearer to us his words which were now see my baneful punishment thou that though breathing goest to see the dead see whether any be as great as this and that thou with thee mayst bear news of me know that bertrand de born i am the man who gave the youthful king the ill support of sire and son i mutual rebels made ahithophel by absalom and david with his malicious goadings did no more because i severed those who thus were joined i bear my brain around with me alas severed from its foundation in this trunk retaliation thus is seen in me end of inferno canto twenty eight inferno canto twenty nine the eighth circle fraud the tenth trench falsifiers of metals the many people and unheard of wounds had caused my eyes to be so drunk with tears that fain they were to linger there and weep but virgil said at what art gazing still why is it that thine eyes still rest down there among the wretched mutilated shades thou didst not thus when in the other trenches consider then if thou propose to count them that this trench circles two and twenty miles and that the moon is now beneath our feet short is the time allowed us still and more there is to see than what thou seest here if thou hadst heeded i thereat replied the reason for my gazing there thou wouldst perhaps have granted me a longer stay meantime my leader on his way was going and i behind him moving as i made my answer adding in that hollow place whereon i kept mine eyes so steadily i think a spirit sprung from mine own blood bewails the fault so dearly paid for there thereat my teacher said let not thy thoughts hereafter break on him heed other things and there let him remain for at the foot of that small bridge i saw him point thee out and with his finger fiercely threaten thee jerry del bello i then heard him called so holy wast thou then intent on him who formerly possessed Hautefort, that thou, till he departed, didst not look beyond. Leader, said I, his death by violence, which is not yet avenged for him by any who shared the shame, made him indignant. That, as I believe, was why he went away without addressing me. He thus has caused me to pity him the more. We thus conversed till we had reached the first place on the crag, whence, had there been more light, the next ravine had to its very bottom been revealed. When we or Malebolgia's final cloister were situated so that its lay brethren could be perceived by us, uncouth laments, which had their arrowheads with pity barbed, so pierced me through and through that with my hands I closed mine ears. 
such pain as there would be if from the hospitals of valdichiana maremma and sardinia from july until september all diseases came together in one ditch such was it here and out of it there came a stench like that which out of rotting limbs is wont to come adown the last bank of the lengthy crag we went as ever to the left and then much clearer was my vision toward the bottom wherein the servant of the most high lord justice infallible is punishing the falsifiers she recordeth here i do not think it were a sadder sight to see the whole race in aegina sick when so suffused with poison was the air that all the animals down to the little worm fell dead and when the ancient race of people according to what poets hold for truth out of the seed of ants restored themselves than now it was to see the spirits languish down in that gloomy ditch in different heaps one on his belly lay and others leaned against each other's shoulders while another crawled on all fours along the dismal path without conversing step by step we moved both looking at and listening to the sick who could not raise their bodies two of these i then saw sitting and against each other leaning just as a pan against a pan is leaned to warm and spotted o'er with scabs from head to foot and never have i seen a curry comb plied by a boy for whom his master waited or by one who kept awake against his will as each oft plied upon himself the edge of fingernails for the great rage of itching which hath else no help their nails kept scraping down their scabs as doth a knife the scales of brim or fish of other kinds equipped with larger scales o oh, thou that with thy fingers flays thyself to one of them my leader then began and who at times doth pincers make of them pray tell us whether latin any be of those in here so may thy nails suffice thee for thy work eternally we both of us whom thou beholdest here so spoiled are latin answered one who wept but who art thou that didst inquire of us my leader thereupon said i am one who with this living man from ledge to ledge descend and who propose to show him hell thereat the common back was broken up and trembling each of them turned round toward me with others who had heard him by rebound then my good teacher drew close up to me and said say whatsoever thou wilt to them hence since he so had wished it i began so may your memory never fly away from human minds in that first world of ours but rather under many suns survive pray tell me who ye are and of what people nor let your foul and loathsome punishment make you afraid to show yourselves to me i of arezzo was and albero da siena had me burned one then replied but what i died for doth not bring me here tis true i said to him although in jest that i knew how to raise me in the air and he who curious had but little sense wished me to show that art to him and only because i did not make him deedless he had me burned by one who treated him as son but to the last trench of the ten minos who may not make mistakes condemned me for the alchemy i practised in the world then to the poet i now was there ever a people as vainglorious as the men of siena surely not the french by far whereat the other leprous one who heard me replied to what i said excepting striga who moderation knew and what he spent and niccolo who was the first to find the costly use of clothes in gardens where such seed takes root excepting too the company on whom Kajadashan wasted his vineyard and great forest land while Dabal yato squandered all his sense but so that thou mayst know who backs thee thus against the men of siena point thine eyes toward me that well my face may answer thee so shalt thou see that i am capocchio's shade who meddles falsified by alchemy and thou if well i see thee shouldst recall how good an ape of nature i was once end of inferno canto twenty nine inferno canto thirty the eighth circle fraud the tenth trench falsifiers of persons money and words 
when juno on account of semele was angry with the royal blood of thebes as several times she showed herself to be so fiercely mad did athamas become that when he saw his wife approaching him burdened by her two sons on either side spread we the nets he cried that i may take upon their passing lioness and cubs and thereupon stretched out his cruel claws and taking hold of one learchus named whirled him around and dashed him gainst a rock his wife then with the other drowned herself again when fortune so low down had brought the trojans arrogant all daring power that with their kingdom shattered was their king hecuba sad forlorn and captive now when she had seen her dead polyxena and in her painful anguish had perceived her polydorus lying on the beach out of her senses barked as would a dog so greatly had her suffering turned her mind but ne'er did furies or of thebes or troy reveal in any one such cruelty in goading beasts or much less human limbs as that which i beheld in two death-pale and naked shades who ran around and bit as doth a boar when from the sty let out one reached capocchio and so thrust his tusks into his neck behind that dragging him he made his belly scrape the solid ground the aretine still trembling said to me that imp is gianni skeeky who enraged goes all around ill-treating others thus then oh i said to him so may the other not fix his teeth in thee be not too tired to tell me who he is before he skips and he to me that is the ancient soul of wicked mirror who outside the bounds of lawful love became her father's mistress she came to sin with him by counterfeiting another person in herself as dared the other one who yonder goes away that he might gain the lady of the stud to counterfeit buoso donati's self and make his will and give it legal form when the two furious souls on whom my eyes were fixed had passed away i turned them round to look upon the other evil born and one i saw who like a lute was shaped if he had only had his groin cut off down in the region where a man is forked the heavy dropsy which unmates the limbs in such a way with ill-digested humour that face and paunch no longer correspond were causing him to keep his lips apart as doth the hectic who because of thirst turns one lip chinward and the other up oh ye that are and wherefore i know not free from all torment in this world of woe said he to us behold and pay attention to master adam's wretched misery when living i had all that i desired and now alas i crave a drop of water the little brooks which toward the arno run down from the casentino's green-clad hills and render all their channels cool and fresh are evermore before me nor in vain because their image makes me drier far than this disease which strips my face of flesh the rigid justice which is scourging me takes from the very place in which i sinned the means to give my size a greater flight there lies romena where i falsified the coin on which the baptist form is stamped for that i left my body burned above but could i see the woeful soul of guido or alexander or their brother here for fonte branda i'd not give the sight one is in here already if the shades who go around here raging tell the truth but what is that to me whose limbs are bound if only i were still so light of foot 
that i could in a hundred years advance one inch i'd be already on the road in search of him among the loathsome people although this trench goes round eleven miles and is no less than half a mile across through them am i in such a family for they persuaded me to coin the florins which had at least three carats of alloy then i to him said who are those two wretches who smoking like wet hands in winter time are lying there beside thee on thy right i found them here he answered when i reigned into this ditch since when they have not turned nor will i think for all eternity one is the woman who charged joseph falsely the other sinon troy's deceitful greek their burning fever makes them weak like this and one of them who felt aggrieved perhaps at being named so darkly smote the speaker upon his hard stiff belly with his fist it made a sound as it had been a drum then master adam smote him with his arm which did not seem less hard upon his face and said though i of motion be deprived by reason of my limbs which heavy are i have an arm that's loose for needs like this then he replied when going to the fire thou hadst it not so ready but just so and more thou hadst it when thou madest coin he of the dropsy here thou sayest true but thou wast not so true a witness there where thou wast questioned of the truth at troy if i spoke falsely thou didst falsify the coin said sinon i'm for one sin here and thou for more than any other demon remember perjurer the horse replied he of the swollen paunch and bitter be for thee that known it is by all the world i'll be for thee the thirst wherewith thy tongue is cracking said the greek and that foul water which for thine eyes thus makes thy porch a hedge thereat the coiner said as is it wont thy mouth in speaking evil gapeth wide for though i'm thirsty and humour stuffs me out thine is the fever and the aching head and thou'dst not stand in need of many words bidding thee lick the mirror of narcissus on listening to them i was all intent when now be careful there my teacher said for i'm not far from quarrelling with thee when i thus heard him speak to me in anger such was the shame wherewith i turned to him that through my memory it is circling still and such as he who dreameth of his harm and dreaming wishes that he dreamt and thus as if it were not longs for that which is such i became who impotent to speak would fain excuse myself and all the while was doing so but did not think i was less shame would wash away a greater fault than thine hath been my teacher said to me therefore unburden thee of all thy sadness and count on me as ever at thy side if it again should chance that fortune find thee where folk in such a wrangle are engaged for vulgar is the wish to hear such things end of inferno canto 30 Inferno, Canto 31, The Edge of the Central Well, The Giants. One and the self-same tongue first wounded me, so that it coloured both my cheeks, and then supplied me with the medicine required. Achilles and his father's lance, I hear, was likewise wont to be the source of, first, a sad, and after, of a grateful gift. 
we turned our backs upon the woeful vale over the bank which girds it round about and passed across without a single word here less than night it was and less than day so that my sight advanced not far but here i heard a horn give forth so loud a sound that it had rendered any thunder faint this led mine eyes as counter to its path they followed wholly to a single place after the woeful rout when charlemagne the holy army of his knights had lost roland blew not so terrible a blast i had not kept my head turned toward it long when many lofty towers i seemed to see i therefore teacher say what town is this since from the darkness from too far away thou peerest he replied it comes about that afterward thou errst in conceiving if yonder thou attain thou'lt clearly see how from far away one's senses are deceived hence onward urge thyself a little more thereat he took my hand with kindly care and said to me ere further on we go so that the fact may seem less strange to thee know then that towers they are not but giants and all of them are standing in the well around the bank each from his navel down as when a fog is thinning off one's gaze little by little giveth shape to that which since it packs the air the mist conceals even so as through the dense dark air i pierced and nearer drew and nearer to the brink error in me took flight and fear increased for as upon its round enclosing walls monte regione crowds itself with towers thus o'er the margin which surrounds the well with one half of their bodies towered up those frightful giants whom when from the sky he thunders jupiter is threatening still already now was i distinguishing the face of one his shoulders and his breast most of his paunch and down his sides both arms when nature ceased from making animals like these and took such executioners from mars she certainly did very well and even if she of elephants and whales repent her not whoever subtly looks holds her therein the more discreet and just for where the reasoning faculty is joined to evil will equipped with power to act people can make against it no defence his face appeared to me as long and big as is at rome the pine cone of st peter's and in proportion to it were his other bones so that the bank which from his middle down an apron was showed quite so much of him above it that of reaching to his hair three frisians would have made a useless boast for i full thirty spans of him perceived down from the place at which one buckles cloaks et almi. the frightful mouth to which no sweeter psalms were fitting thereupon began to cry then toward him cried my leader foolish soul keep to thy horn and vent thyself therewith when wrath or other passion seizes thee search at thy neck and thou wilt find the cord which holds it tight o spirit of confusion and see it lying on thy mighty breast to me then self-accused he stands for this is nimrod to whose evil thought is due that more than one tongue in the world is spoken let us leave him alone nor talk in vain for such is every tongue to him as his to others is for that is known to none then turning to the left we travelled on much further and within a crossbow's shot we found the next one far more large and fierce what was the master's power who girded him i cannot say but this one had in front his left arm and behind his back his right tied by a chain which downward from his neck held him so bound that on the uncovered part it wound around as far as the fifth coil my leader said to me against jove most high this proud soul wished to test his strength and hence hath this reward Ephialtes is his name his haughty undertaking he attempted what time the giants caused the gods to fear the arms he plied he moveth now no more and i to him if possible it be i'd gladly have these eyes of mine enjoy experience of the measureless briarius then he replied antis thou behold not far from here who speaks and since unbound can set us at the bottom of all sin he is much further on whom thou wouldst see and bound he is 
and shaped like this one, save that more ferocious in his looks he seems. There never was an earthquake strong enough to shake a tower with so much violence as Ephialtes quickly shook at this. Then more than ever yet did I fear death, nor for it was there need of more than fear, had it not been that I perceived his bonds. We thereupon proceeded further still, and to Antaeus came, who full five ells beside his head protruded from the pit. O thou that in the valley fortune blessed, which once caused Scipio to inherit glory, when with his followers Hannibal took flight, once tookst a thousand lions as thy prey, and who, hadst thou been at thy brethren's war on high, it seems that it is still believed the sons of earth had been the victors there. Pray set us down below, nor let disdain affect thee where the cold locks up Cocytus. Make us not go to Titius or to Tiphius. This man can give what most is longed for here. Stoop then, nor twist thy muzzle. He can still give fame to thee on earth, since he is living and still looks forward to long life, if grace recall him not untimely to itself. The teacher thus, then he in haste stretched out the hands, whose mighty pressure Hercules once felt, and took my leader. Virgil then, on feeling himself taken, said to me, Come here, that I may take thee up. And then so did, that he and I one bundle were. Such as the Carisenda seems, when viewed beneath its leaning side, when e'er a cloud sails o'er it so that opposite it hangs. Such did Antaeus seem to me, who watched to see him stoop, and such a moment twas, that I had gladly gone another road. But lightly at the bottom which devours Judas and Lucifer, he set us down. Nor thus bent over did he linger there, but raised himself, as on a ship a mast. End of Inferno, Canto 31 Inferno, Canto 32 The Ninth Circle, Treachery, Cocytus Traitors to their relatives and to their country If I had rhymes that were as harsh and hoarse as would be fitting for the dismal hole, on which lean all the other circling rocks, I'd squeeze the juice of my conception out more fully. But because I have them not, not without fear do I resolve to speak. For to describe the bottom of the universe is not an enterprise wherewith to jest, nor for a tongue that says Mama and Dad. Let then those ladies give my verse their aid, who helped Amphion build the walls of Thebes, that from the facts the telling differ not. O rabble that ill-born beyond all people are in a place to speak of which is hard, far better had ye here been sheep or goats. When we were down within the gloomy well, beneath the giant's feet, though lower far, and I still gazing at its lofty wall, I heard one say to me, Look where thou walkest, and see that with thy feet thou trample not the heads of us two wretched, weary brothers. Thereat I turned around, and saw before me, and neath my feet, a lake which, being frozen, seemed to be made of glass and not of water. The Danube up in Austria never made so thick a veil in winter for its course, nor yonder neath the cold sky did the dawn, as what was here. For even if Tambernic had fallen on it, or had Pietrapana, it had not cracked even at its very edge. And as a frog remains, to do its croaking, with muzzle out of water, in the season when oft the peasant dreams that she is gleaning, even so, as far as where one's shame is shown, the woeful shades were livid in the ice, as to the notes of storks they set their teeth. Each kept his face turned downward, from his mouth the cold, and from his eyes his saddened heart provides itself a witness in their midst. When I had gazed around a while, I looked down at my feet, and two I saw with heads so close together that their hair was mixed. Ye that are pressing thus your breasts together, say who ye are, said I. They bent their necks, and when their faces had been raised toward me, their eyes, moist only inwardly before, gushed upward through the lids, whereat the cold, binding the tears between them, closed them up. A clamp ne'er bound so tightly board to board, whereat so great the anger mastering them, like two he-goats, they butted one another and one who had by reason of the cold lost both his ears, with face still lowered, said, 
why dost thou mirror thee so much on us if thou wouldst know who those two near thee are the valley from which thy Vicenzio flows belonged to their sire albert and to them they issued from one body and thou canst search through all caina but thou it never find a shade more worthy to be fixed in ice not he whose breasts and shadow broken were by one same blow at arthur's hand nor yet focaccia nor this fellow here whose head so blocks me that i cannot see beyond and who was asol mascarioni called who he was though if tuscan now knowst well and that thou put me to no further speech know then that i was come up to you on the day Patsy, and that to excuse me i await Kaline. thereafter i beheld a thousand faces made dog-like by the cold hence frozen ponds cause me to shudder now and always will and now while toward that centre we were moving where to all heavy objects gravitate and i was trembling in the eternal cold i know not whether it were will or fate or chance but as i walked among the heads hard in the face of one i struck my foot weeping he scolded wherefore dost thou smite me unless thou comest to increase the vengeance for monteberti why dost thou molest me and i said teacher wait now for me here that i through him may issue from a doubt then at thy pleasure shalt thou hurry me my leader stopped and i to him who still was savagely blaspheming said what sort of man art thou that scoldest people so now who art thou that ghost he replied through antinora smiting cheek so roughly that it would be too much wert thou alive i am alive and it may profit thee was my reply for me to place thy name if fame thou ask among my other notes and he i crave the contrary away with thee and bother me no more for ill dost thou know how to flatter in this bog thereat i seized him by the nape and said it needs must be that thou reveal thy name or that no hair remain upon thee here then he to me though thou pull out my hair i'll neither say nor show thee who i am fall thou upon my head a thousand times i had his hair wrapped round my hand already and more than one shock had i plucked from him while he was barking with his eyes turned down when here another cried what ails thee bocca is making noise with jawbones not enough unless thou bark what devil touches thee henceforth said i i would not have thee speak perfidious traitor for true news of thee i'll carry with me to thy lasting shame but be gone and tell where thou wilt he answered but be not silent if thou issue hence of him who had now just his tongue so ready he here bewails the money of the french him of duero thou canst say I saw where cold the days are for the sinful folk, and if thou shouldst be asked who else was there, thou hast beside thee him of Peccaria, who had his gorget cut in two by Florence. Gianni de Soldanier is further on, I think, with Ganellon and Tebardello, who while its people slept unlocked Faenza. From him we had departed now, when two I saw, so frozen in a single hole, that one man's head served as the other's cap. And as because of hunger bread is eaten, even so the upper on the other set his teeth, where to the nape the brain is joined. Nor otherwise did Tadeus gnaw the temples of Menalippus out of spite, than this one was gnawing at the skull and other parts. O thou that showest by a sign so beastly hatred toward him thou eatest, tell me why, said I to him, on this express condition, that shouldst thou rightfully of him complain, I, knowing who ye are, and that one's sin, may quit thee for it in the world above, if that wherewith I speak be not dried up. End of Inferno Canto 32 Inferno Canto 33 The Ninth Circle, Treachery, Cocytus, Traitors to their country and to their guests. From his grim meal that sinner raised his mouth, and wiped it on the hair of that same head which he had spoiled behind. He then began, Thou wouldst that I renew a hopeless grief, the thought of which already breaks my heart before I speak of it. But if my words are likely to be seeds, and bear the fruit of infamy upon the traitor whom I gnaw, speaking and weeping shalt thou see together. I know not who thou art, nor by what means thou art come down here, 
but when I hear thee speak, thou truly seem'st to me a Florentine. Know then, that I, Count Ugolino, was, and this man here, Ruggieri, the Archbishop. And now I'll tell thee why I'm thus his neighbour. That, as the outcome of his evil thoughts, I, trusting him, was seized, and afterwards was put to death, there is no need to say. But that which thou canst not have heard, that is, how cruel was my death, thou now shalt hear, and whether he have wronged me thou shalt know. A narrow slit within the molting tower, which bears because of me the name of hunger, and in whose walls still others must be locked, had through its opening shown me many a moon already when I had the evil dream which rent apart the curtain of the future. This one, therein a lord and huntsman seemed, chasing the wolf and wolfings towards the mount, which hinders Pisans from beholding Luca, with bitches lean and eager and well-trained. For he had set before him in his van Gualandi with Sismondi and Lanfranchi. After a little run both father and son seemed weary to me. Then methought I saw their flanks torn open by sharp-pointed fangs. When, just before the morning, I awoke, I heard my children, who were with me there, sob in their sleep, and ask me for their bread. Cruel indeed thou art, if thinking what my heart forebode, thou grievest not already. And if thou weepest not, at what art wont to weep? Awake they were, and now the hour was drawing nigh when food was brought to us. Hence each, by reason of his dream, was worried. And then I heard the dread tower's lower door nailed up, whereat, without a word, I looked my children in the face. I did not weep, so like a stone had I become within. They wept, and my poor little Anselm said, Father, thou lookest so, what aileth thee? But still I did not weep, nor did I answer through all that day or through the following night, till on the world another sun had dawned. Then, when a little beam had made its way into our woeful prison, and I perceived by their four faces how I looked myself, I bit in anguish both my hands. And they, thinking it done because I craved to eat, immediately stood up and said to me, Father, much less shall we be pained if us thou eat. Thou with this wretched flesh did clothe us. Do thou then strip it from us now. Thereat, to sadden them no more, I calmed myself. Through that day and the next we all kept mute. Ah, oh, why, hard earth, didst thou not open up? Then Gaddo, when the fourth day we had reached, stretched himself out at length before my feet, and said, My father, why dost thou not help me? And there he died. And even as thou seest me, between the fifth day and the sixth, I saw the three fall one by one. And, blind already, I gave myself to groping over each, and two days called them after they were dead. Then fasting proved more powerful than pain. When he had spoken thus, with eyes awry, he seized again the wretched skull with teeth, which for the bone were strong as are a dog's. Ah, Pisa, foul reproach of those that dwell in that fair country where the sea is heard. Since slow thy neighbours are to punish thee, then let Caprara and Gorgona move, and make a hedge across the Arno's mouth, that every person in thee may be drowned. For though Count Ugolino had the name of traitor to thee in thy castle towns, thou shouldst not thus have crucified his sons. Their youthful age had made, thou modern Thebes, Rigata and Uguccione innocent, and the other two my canto names above. Further along we went, to where the ice roughly enswathes another class of people, not downward turned, but wholly on their backs. Weeping itself allows not weeping there, and tears which find a barrier in their eyes turn back, to cause their suffering to increase because the first ones form a solid block, and thus, like crystal visors, wholly fill the hollow cup beneath the brow. And though, as in a callous spot, because of cold, all feeling had departed from my face, it seemed to me that now I felt some wind. Whence I to him, My teacher, who moves this? Is not all moving air quenched here below? 
and he ere long shalt thou be where thine eyes seeing the cause which raineth down the blast will make an answer to thee as to this one of the wretches of the icy crust called out to us thereat o souls so cruel that unto you the last place is assigned remove from me the hard veils on my face that i may somewhat vent the pain that fills my heart before the tears freeze up again whence i to him if thou wouldst have me help thee say who thou art and should i not relieve thee may i needs reach the bottom of the ice then he i frate alberigo am he of the evil garden's fruit who here for every fig i gave get back a date then oh said i art thou already dead and he to me replied i have no knowledge how in the world above my body fares such is the privilege of this ptolemaea that frequently a soul falls into it ere arthropos have caused it to move on but that thou scrape more gladly from my face these glassy tears know then that just as soon as any soul betrays as i betrayed its body is taken from it by a demon who then takes charge of it until its time be all revolved into a well like this it rushes headlong down and so perhaps the body of the shade that winters here behind me is still visible above this thou shouldst know if just come down for he ser branca doria is and many years have now gone by since he was thus shut up i think said i that thou deceivest me for branca doria is not dead as yet but eats and drinks and sleeps and dons his clothes above us in the male branca's ditch he said there where the sticky pitch is boiling not yet had mikel Tsanke's soul arrived when in his stead this fellow left behind a devil in his body as did also one of his kinsmen who with him performed the treachery but stretch thy hand here now and open my own eyes and yet i oped them not for rudeness shown to him was courtesy ah genoese ye men estranged from all morality and full of every vice why from the earth are ye not wholly driven for with the meanest spirit of romagna i found one such of you that for his deeds in soul he bathes already in cositos and seems in body still alive above end of inferno canto thirty three inferno canto thirty four the ninth circle treachery cocytus traitors to their benefactors lucifer the banners of the king of hell advance toward us now therefore look ahead of thee my teacher said and see if thou perceive him as when a heavy fog is breathed abroad or when at night our hemisphere grows dark a windmill looks when seen from far away even such a structure seemed i now to see then for the wind i shrank behind my leader for other shelter was there none i now and tis with fear i put it into verse was where the shades were wholly covered up and visible as is a straw in glass some lying are and some are standing up one on his head the other on his soles one like a bow bends toward his feet his face when we had gone so far ahead that now it pleased my teacher to reveal to me the creature who once seemed so beautiful he stepped from where he was in front of me, stopped me, and said, Lo this, and lo the place where thou must arm thyself with fortitude. How frozen and how weak I then became, ask thou not, reader, for I write it not, because all speech would be of small avail. I did not die, nor yet remained alive. Think for thyself now, hast thou any wit, what I became of both of these deprived. The emperor of the realm of woe stood forth out of the ice from midway up his breast. And I compare more closely with a giant than merely with his arms the giants do. Consider now how great that whole must be, that with such parts as these may be compared. If once as beautiful as ugly now, he still raised up his brows against his maker, justly doth every woe proceed from him. Oh, what a marvel it appeared to me when I beheld three faces to his head. 
one was in front of us and that was red the other two were to the latter joined right o'er the middle of each shoulder blade and met each other where he had his crest that on the right twixt white and yellow seemed the left one such to look at as are those who come from there where Valewood flows the nile under each face two mighty wings stretched out of size proportioned to so huge a bird sails of the sea i never saw so large they had no feathers but were like a bat's in fashion these he flapped in such a way that three winds issued forth from him thereby cossetus was completely frozen up with six eyes he was weeping and his tears and bloody slaver trickled o'er three chins in each mouth as a heckle would have done a sinner he was crushing with his teeth and thus was causing pain to three of them to him who was in front of us the biting was nothing to the clawing for at times his back remained completely stripped of skin that soul up there which hath the greatest pain judas iscariot is my teacher said who hath his head within and plies his legs without of the other two whose heads are down brutus is he who from the black snout hangs see how he writhes and utters not a word cassius the other is who so big limbed appears but night is coming up again and now it is time to leave for we've seen all then as it pleased him i embraced his neck and he availed himself of time and place and when the wings were opened wide enough he firmly grasped the shaggy flanks and then from tuft to tuft he afterward descended between the matted hair and frozen crusts when we were come to where the thigh turns round just at the thick part of the hips my leader with tiring effort and with stress of breath turned his head round to where his legs had been and seized the hair as one would who ascends hence i thought we were going back to hell hold fast to me for by such stairs as these panting like one worn out my teacher said must such great wickedness be left behind then through an opening in the rock he issued and after seating me upon its edge over toward me advanced his cautious step raising mine eyes i thought that i should still see lucifer the same as when i left him but i beheld him with his legs held up and thereupon if i became perplexed let those dull people think who do not see what kind of point that was which i had passed stand up my teacher said upon thy feet the way is long and difficult the road and now to middle tears the sun returns it was no palace hallway where we were but just a natural passage underground which had a wretched floor and lack of light before i tear myself from this abyss teacher said i on rising talk to me a little and correct my wrong ideas where is the ice and how is this one fixed thus upside down and in so short a time how hath the sun from evening crossed to morn then he to me thou thinkest thou art still beyond the centre where i seized the hair of that bad worm who perforates the world while i was going down thou wast beyond it but when i turned thou then didst pass the point to which all weights are drawn on every side thou now art come beneath the hemisphere opposed to that the great dry land o'er covers and neath whose zenith was destroyed the man who without sinfulness was born and died thy feet thou hast upon the little sphere which forms the other surface of judeca tis morning here whenever evening there and he who made our ladder with his hair is still fixed fast even as he was before he fell on this side out of heaven whereat the land which hitherto was spread out here through fear of him made of the sea a veil and came into our hemisphere perhaps to flee from him what is on this side seen left the place empty here and upward rushed there is a place down there as far removed from beelzebub as e'er his tomb extends not known by sight but by a brooklet's sound which flows down through a hole there in the rock gnawed in it by the water's spiral course which slightly slopes my leader then and i in order to regain the world of light entered upon that dark and hidden path 
and without caring for repose went up he going on ahead and i behind till through a rounded opening i beheld some of the lovely things the sky contains thence we came out and saw again the stars end of inferno canto 34 purgatorio canto 1 introduction to the purgatorio the shore of the island of purgatory cato to run o'er better water hoists her sails the little vessel of my genius now which leaves behind her such a cruel sea and of that second realm i'll sing wherein the human spirit purifies itself and groweth worthy to ascend to heaven but here let poetry arise from death since holy muses yours i am and let calliope hear somewhat higher soaring with those sweet tones accompany my song whose power the miserable magpies felt so keenly that of pardon they despaired the oriental sapphire's tender hue now gathering in the sky's unclouded face as far as to the first of circles pure began again to give mine eyes delight when forth i issued from the deadly air which with its gloom had filled mine eyes and heart the beauteous planet which incites to love veiling with light the fishes in her train was causing all the eastern sky to laugh round to the right i turned and set my mind upon the other pole and saw four stars never perceived save by the first of men the sky appeared to enjoy their little flames o region of the north that widowed art because deprived of gazing thereupon when i had from the sight of them withdrawn turning a little toward the other pole whence now the wane had wholly disappeared a lone old man beside me i perceived deserving of such reverence in his looks that no son owes his father any more long was the beard he wore and partly white as likewise was the hair upon his head two locks of which hung down upon his breast and so the rays of those four holy stars adorned his face with splendour that to me coarse he looked as if the sun were facing him who then are ye that gainst the blind streams have from the eternal prison escaped he said moving the while those venerable locks who led you or what served you as a lamp when forth ye issued from the night profound which makes the infernal veil forever black are broken thus the laws of hell's abyss or through new counsel is there change in heaven that ye though damned are come to these my cliffs my leader thereupon took hold of me and with his words and with his hands and signs imposed respect upon my legs and brow he then replied i came not of myself from heaven came down a lady at whose prayer i helped this man with my companionship but since thy will it is that our true state should be explained to thee more clearly mine it cannot be that this should be denied thee not yet had this man his last evening seen but through his folly was so near to it that he was left but very little time as i have told thee i was sent to save his life nor was there any other way than this to which i have addressed myself i have shown him all the people who are guilty and now i mean those spirits to reveal who neath thy jurisdiction cleanse themselves long would it take to tell thee how i led him virtue descendeth from on high which helps me lead him to see thee and to hear thee speak his coming therefore pleased to welcome freedom he seeks which is so dear as knoweth he who gives up life therefore this thou dost know since death for its sake was not bitter to thee in utica where thou didst leave the robe which on the great day will so brightly shine the eternal edicts are not void through us for this man lives and i am not bound by minos but of that circle am wherein the eyes of thy chaste marcia are o holy breast whose looks implore thee still to hold her thine for love of her then yield thee unto us permit us through thy seven domains to go my grateful praise of thee i'll bear to her if to be mentioned there below thou deign 
marcia so pleased mine eyes he then replied that while upon the other side i was i granted all the favours she desired now that she dwells beyond the evil stream no longer can she move me by the law made at the moment when i issued thence but if a lady of heaven impel and guide thee as thou hast said no need of flattering prayers suffice it thee that for her sake thou ask go then and see that with a leafless rush thou gird this man and that thou wash his face so that therefrom all foulness thou remove for twere not fit he went with eyes all cast by any mist before the first of those who serve as ministers of paradise this little isle around its lowest base down yonder where the waves are beating it produces rushes on its yielding ooze no other plant like one that brought forth leaves or hardened can maintain its life down there because it yields not when receiving blows thereafter be not hither your return the sun which rises now will show you how to climb the mountain by the easiest slope thereat he disappeared and i arose without a word and to my leader's side i closely drew and toward him turned mine eyes and he began son follow thou my steps let us turn backward for the shore slopes down on this side toward its lowly boundaries the dawn was vanquishing the morning breeze which fled before it so that from afar i recognized the shimmering of the sea we now were going o'er the lonely plain as one who to a road he lost returns and till he find it seems to go in vain when we were there where with the sun the dew still struggles on through being in a place where for the breeze it slowly melts away my teacher having spread out both his hands rested them gently on the tender grass whence i who of his purpose was aware yielded to him the cheeks my tears had stained he then brought all that natural colour back which hell had on my countenance concealed we came thereafter to that lonely shore which never saw its waters sailed by one who afterward experienced a return here as the other pleased he girded me o oh, wondrous sight for like the humble plant which he had chosen another instantly sprang forth again from where he tore the first end of purgatorio canto one purgatorio canto two the shore of the island of purgatory the angel pilot and arriving souls and now already had the sun arrived at that horizon whose meridian circle rests with its zenith or jerusalem and night which circles opposite thereto was issuing from the ganges with the scales which when she gains are falling from her hands so that the white and pure vermilion cheeks of beautiful aurora where i was were turning orange through excessive age along the seaside we were lingering still like folk who taking thought about their road go on in heart but with their bodies stay when lo as at the approach of morning mars because of heavy vapours groweth red down in the west above the ocean's floor even so i saw may i again behold it a light which o'er the sea so swiftly moved that no flight is as rapid as its motion from which when i a moment had withdrawn mine eyes to ask a question of my leader again i saw it grown more bright and large and on each side of it there then appeared i knew not what white thing and underneath little by little came another forth meanwhile my teacher uttered not a word until the first white objects looked like wings then having recognized the pilot well he cried see see now that thou bend thy knees this is god's angel fold thy hands henceforth shalt thou behold such officers as this see how he so scorns human instruments as to wish neither oar nor other sail than his own wings between such distant shores 
see how he holds them straight up toward the sky stroking the air with those eternal plumes which do not mould as mortal feathers do and then as more and more the bird divine drew near to us the brighter he appeared therefore mine eyes endured him not near by but down i cast them with a little boat he came ashore so agile and so light the water swallowed up no part of it such on its stern the heavenly pilot stood that he would bless one were he but described more than a hundred spirits sat within when israel out of egypt came they all in unison were singing there together with what is written after in that psalm then having signed them with the holy cross whereat all cast themselves upon the shore he went away as swiftly as he came the crowd which stayed seemed strangers to the place and gazed around them there as doth a man who with unwonted things acquaints himself the sun which from the middle of the sky had hunted capricorn with arrows bright was shooting forth the day on every side when those new people raised their brows toward us and said if ye know how point out to us the road that one should take to reach the mount and virgil answered ye perchance believe that we have had experience of this place but we are pilgrim strangers like yourselves we came just now a little while before you but by another way so rough and hard that going up will now seem play to us the souls who by my breathing had become aware that i was still a living being in their astonishment turned death-like pale and as around a messenger who bears the olive people surge to hear the news and as to crowding none of them seem shy so one and all those fortune favoured souls fixed on my face their gaze as if forgetting to go and make their spirits beautiful then one among them i beheld advance in such a loving manner to embrace me that it persuaded me to do the like oh save in your appearance empty shades three times behind it did i clasp my hands and to my breast therewith as oft returned with wonder i believe i painted me smiling because of this the shade drew back while following after i pressed further on with gentle words he told me to desist then who it was i knew and begged of him to stop a little while and speak with me as thee i loved when in my mortal body he answered me even so when freed i love thee therefore i stop but wherefore goest thou Cazella, mine said i i take this journey that where i am i may return again but why from thee hath so much time been taken and he to me no outrage hath been done me if he who takes both when and whom he likes hath more than once refused me passage here for to a righteous will is his conformed yet peacefully these three months hath he taken whoever wished to enter into his boat hence i who now was toward the seashore bent where tiber's water mingles with the salt was with benignity received by him at yonder river's mouth toward which his wings even now are turned for those who go not down toward archeron always assemble there and i if some new law take not from thee the memory or the practice of the song of love which used to quiet all my longings be pleased a little to console therewith my spirit which because of coming here when in its body is so sore distressed the love that talketh with me in my mind he thereupon began to sing so sweetly that still within me is its sweetness heard my teacher i and those that with him were seemed as contented as if none of us had any other thing upon his mind absorbed in listening to his notes we all were motionless when lo the grave old man who cried ye laggard spirits what is this what means this negligence and standing still run to the mount and strip ye off the slough which lets not god be visible to you 
even as when picking grains of wheat or tares doves met together at their feeding calm and not displaying their accustomed pride if anything appear that frightens them all of a sudden leave their food alone because assailed by greater cause for care even so i saw that new-come family give up the song and toward the hillside move like one who goes but whither knoweth not nor was in less haste our departure made End of Purgatorio Canto 2